Hello, it's March 2022, and I've shared over the years a lot about my personal life, as well as my efforts and things that I've done and accomplished in life. And I've shared so much to show that there's a human being behind all this, behind my content, behind my efforts and, and everything else. It's not been easy, especially sharing the really low moments in my life. And I've shared some happier moments in my life. But I thought I would like to expand a little bit on how my life developed who I am today. And it kind of ties in, or it's going to tie into what I shared in a recent video with regards to um, the whole process serving and all this other stuff that I, that I done later but like how did I ever evolve into the character that I that I am now and I thought about this just before I was recording and I I'm, think I'm gonna go back just so briefly to my childhood no it's not gonna be a five hour I hope it's not gonna be a five hour video but I, I just wanted to go back to public school and if I'm not mistaken I think it was maybe grade four and it's, it's all gonna make sense if, if you listen I hope it's, it's gonna make sense as I tell my story and I had a very dysfunctional childhood and that's all I'm gonna say with regards to that now I remember we were playing was phys ed and we were playing floor hockey and I don't know I didn't know anything about hockey or I still I don't follow sports it's team sports and so I really don't know I still don't know much about hockey although I have had friends explain things to me which is great but um, I was playing and I was given the position of defense I had no idea what that was and so I remember the teacher, and this stuck with me all my life. And I, and I, th I would say that would have been the moment that my foundation was um, created. And I'll, I'll make sense of this a little bit more. So I remember her telling me that I have to defend, protect that guy in the goalie net and I can't let the uh, little plastic puck or whatever we were using a ball go into that net I had to protect him and my second objective was to aid the other guys the, the guys who would go try to score on on the uh, opponent side just you know great for floor hockey and um, I remember at that moment for me was like purpose. I remember that very clearly to this day. And I had to protect the goalie. I didn't. I probably didn't even know what the goalie was. I just knew whoever was there. That's who I had to protect. And I, I would honestly say I've never forgot the, those words: to protect, to defend. Now, later on, I'm going to fast forward now because I'm not going to get into a year by year. I um, got into different kinds of, of training and stuff. And, and um, w one type of training was very specialized. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And so also in the back of my mind that this was going to serve a purpose to protect, to defend. And um, I had a few uh, like father type role models in my life and my say, trainer was one of them. Now the first one I, I had was the first time I met, although I'm from Croatia, my parents are, my family's from Croatia, 
I was born here in Canada. I uh, have uh, an uncle that lives in Sweden. And I met him in 77. And I think he was only around like for a visit for about two weeks or something. But he, those two weeks really, I mean, he made an impression on me. He, I would say that he gave me, taught me to think. Now, he was a, an intellectual, uh, Olympic athlete, literally, and, and everything else. So, and he taught me some lessons. He actually taught me how to play chess. And uh, I was kind of a, a trauma, traumatized kid with everything that was going through in my life at the time. I don't think he realized at the time. So I think he got a little bit frustrated with me, but he taught me a lot of lessons, but I would say he taught me to think. So I don't want to digress, but you know, my, my, my trainer, I think had the most impact because he had the most time with me. And I'll never forget, I was gonna segue again for a moment when, uh, you know, I'd go to the club and then one day I went to the club, I had, you know, my gym bag and all my gear and, and he had come, it was almost like he was waiting for me. And I'll never forget the, the one evening went in and he came up to me and smiled and said, I don't want you here. I was like, I remember at my, I just was floored inside. He's smiling, you know. And uh, he was, he was a father figure to me over those years, many years. And the great family, and I, I miss them a lot. I lost touch with them a long time ago, but whatever. Um, I don't want to go down that tangent. Just life. And he, he just basically said that I, I outgrew the club. I outgrew anything that he could offer, and there was nobody at the, the club that was even a challenge. And by this time, I was already entering. I was recruited into doing personal and private type of security. And this is going to start leading into my development, I guess you could say, into my uh, adulthood. But I was always well. He said I was always welcome back, and I would come back as um, as a what was it like a VIP guest. And uh, sometimes he would uh, get me to demonstrate things like practical things because by now I've I had some some practical experience, we'll say. So anyway. So this began how, was, how my life was molding me, discipline, self-discipline. And um, doing personal and private type of security with, with the various types of training and that specialized training and everything else. It's nothing like what you would see in the movies where it's all action packed. It's like, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time you're you're bored out of your tree and you're being paid to be paranoid. That's the best descriptive I remember using back then. And um, through that, I, it, I learned to observe and assess and, you know, having to assess on a dime situation, scenarios, movement, uh, exits, everything was constantly, that's all your your thought is and um, I mean I can go off and do a whole video on, on, on that kind of stuff but um, so that got me trained to 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 see unusual patterns or individuals that would be of interest or threat and uh, things like that whether it be um, in close quarters or you know, outside, for example. And what's interesting, after I, I lived in uh, overseas uh, in the sun, in the Eastern Bloc for a few years, and then I remember coming back, rebuilding my life, and um, met some new friends. And I would like to say that there was one 
good friend that I had uh, met, him and his brother. His brother and I didn't get along, which is fine, you know. He was, he, there's nothing, nothing bad about his brother, he just didn't get along, right? But we were always, you know, civil. And um, I remember talking to uh, this friend of mine, like uh, you know, some yeah, like a year after, and he said, "I remember when we met you, and we were talking, and we were kind of in, a, in an open setting." And uh, his brother was at first was he just went to stand aside to, to one side of me, and noticed that every time one of them tried to, or you know, like he tried, he he went. But I never allowed to be in between them. Never even noticed that until he started telling me I was like really and then I guess uh, he tried to they were trying to I guess between the two of them they, they you know what's up with me and then uh, I guess he actually tried to circle me just to see how I, and I just instinctively without even a thought as we're just carrying on a conversation just didn't let that happen it was yeah so my point with that is how the previous chapter of my life had started to form me and uh, even when we would go to different places and stuff he would you know make a comment he goes like I'm scoping out like emergency exits where's exits where's who's like where's the people and and there was a couple of times I remember we um, just for you know kind of trying to recapture youth we found was very boring we, we went to a couple of clubs and um yeah he, he would just notice that uh yeah i'm watching movement everything else what's going on and he would say well just relax and i'm like dude i'm i'm totally relaxed and i was but it was just second nature so i had that experience that development because um being ob observing and and through that you learn um, potential threats we'll say as a descriptive uh, tactics and everything else so that was really ingrained into me and being paid to be paranoid I'm not paranoid I don't I'm not really worried about much there's an old saying if you know if something's gonna somebody wants to do something to you they're gonna do it or at least try right until that happens there's what are you worried about so I had that foundation now um, from that chapter. And then eventually I would get into, uh, well, I got into law, practicing law. And uh, yeah, Bill, practicing law. And the, pro, the, the, the whole part of process serving and then really seeing like doing the really hard ones and uh, that's what I would I was just doing it on the side for fun and getting into like costume and, and into a character and doing stakeouts and everything else and um, I, I would uh, I'd never led anything I was you know I was given instructions and then with those instructions I would sometimes think out of the box and you know it's like oh there's, you know, got some activity. Do I, you know, pursue it? What, you know, what to do? So I'll, I had to make some split section calls. So, but that gave me the perspective of. Um, I'm trying to think of a descriptive. So before I was on the defense for protecting people. Now I'm on the offense, uh, trying to get a serve done. So I have those two perspectives uh, in my life. And then with that combination, and I'm, I'm skimming over a lot, obviously. There's a lot of other things and other factors in my life that had helped form who I am. But, you know, I'm very serious and, and being able to really have an understanding on the whole idea... I mentioned before I researched this whole targeted targeted individuals TIs or whatever they're called and listening to them and knowing what I know with with my background and experience 
I, you know, I was, that's, and then, you know, other things that I, I uh, other skill sets that I have, trying to evaluate them, not them so much, but just the whole, that whole idea. And I guess there's a, my, uh, a second point to all this, not only sharing how I developed and, and how, why maybe I am the way I am and, and stuff and being able to, um, I'm trying to think of a description, detect things and notice things and everything else. Um, uh, the whole idea of, of, of someone being stalked professionally, uh, which differs to just crazy people stalking. And I've had stalkers and yeah, I, that's another tangent. It's, it's very real. And until you experience it from, like, I have two perspectives of that. Um, you really can't fathom uh, the possibility of that being real and how far it goes. And, you know, it could be somebody that you, you would never even know. Somebody that you just, somebody casually says hello to you. Um, could be someone uh, making contact for a reason of whatever. Now, I'm not trying to, if anyone out there who's clinically paranoid, don't worry. I mean, 90, arbitrary number, 95% of the people, there's nothing. For us, who knows, right? But the whole world is real. But it's nothing, nothing like you see in movies or television in some ways it's it's far the movies are the furthest from the truth but in some ways it's worse than the movies and I've shared that so I just want to share a little bit more about me who I am and how I developed throughout my life from a child being told you have to protect that person defend them to protecting people and property to, and I, I mentioned briefly, uh, you know, in, in my early twenties, I wanted to be a police officer and passing all my testing and everything else and um, having someone sabotage that literally. And I mentioned this in a couple videos, but anyway. So yeah, I, uh, Just wanted to share that for whatever it's worth how why I think the way I do and again there's lots more um, I've always been a serious person never really one to laugh and you know um, I had my own way my own you know I wasn't all I have a very dry sense of humor so and w when people don't know me, they don't know how to take me, but, and uh, how I think, I may sound negative, say, with something, but I'm not. I may look at obstacles. Some people might interpret that for whatever reason, well, it's being negative. Well, no, it's just, okay, I'm preparing for the obstacles. If they don't happen, gravy if they do well I'm prepared do I worry about obstacles no and i am always been one to try something and jump into the deep end of the pool and see where where it takes me and I'm kind of getting old for that but you know especially living living the way that I have been so anyway this is this video has gone on for a long time and yeah so just wanted to share for what it's worth my life and then the the whole uh, process serving world and and then seeing a glimpse of another profession with uh, skip tracers and kind of being tied in with them and, and seeing that there's endless possibilities and spooky stuff you know and if you want to get into 
what say a government has i mean wow this is the world we all live in so and it's it's so funny how a lot of people especially online they'll use fake names and fake everything and fake photos or because you know they think that they're hiding or protecting them it's like you know something if somebody really wants to find you they're gonna find you and there's nothing that you can do about it it's spooky and as I said I don't I don't worry especially with everything that I've gone through um, people taking my photograph people approaching me uh, things like that okay whatever they're giving me a message that's what I would have done so I have I have that that in-depth understanding with all that and then all my experience and connections with um, law and politics and everything else so take what you will from it uh, if you fell asleep as I'm recording this I'm glad that I was able to help out with that anyway Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Listen to this and write it down if you can't remember it. You're never going to outgrow warfare. You simply must learn to fight. I hear people saying to me all the time, when is it going to get easier? When do you die?